Hola, buenos dias. Uh, welcome to day 47 of the Camino. We are leaving this uh, town. Uh, um, another funny town, really. Sorry, cars going past on the cobbles. Um, it's got some old bits, like the walls that we're just coming to at the bottom of this road. You might not be able to see them very well there, but I'll take a picture. Um, the rest of it seems quite modern. Uh, we stayed in a hotel, which had a few coach tours stopping at it. Um, so lots of people, not the normal kind of place we stay at, but it was very nice. The bed was a bit uncomfy. Um, but food was nice. Um, 12 euros for the pilgrim menu, uh, which was good food. I actually saw some vegetables with the main meal, which is pretty unusual. They were frozen now. <laughs> Anyway, today we have got 12 uh, miles, I think, 20-ish K. And then we're staying in a place which is slightly off the Camino. So we're going to get picked up from somewhere on the way and taken to where we're staying. Um, which is the first time that's happened, but that's how some of the places that are just off the Camino make their money. They offer to pick people up off the Camino and drop them off again the next day uh, so they can carry on. So that's what we're doing. Um, there are 13k before we get over the last hill, I think. And we're climbing something like, we're gonna go down first, about 50, 60 meters. Um, and then we are climbing up for 290, maybe 300 meters, but over 13k. So hopefully not too steep, but looking at the elevation map, there's lots of little steep bits all throughout that journey. So, um, I don't know if we told you this actually, we have a bet every day to see who, <laughs> to see who can guess the right number of hills. And uh, I've gone for 40 today. My dad reckons it's 50. A hill is defined by, uh, a slope <laughs> um, and probably by one you can't necessarily see the end of but um because it goes around a corner or it's too steep something like that so i'll let you know uh, later what the number was anyway take care buen camino Hiya, um, from a little place slightly off the Camino, um, finished walking today, 
And we're in a town that's quite busy with cars and stuff. It's only a little town. It's like basically got a high street and some things off it. Um, and I thought I would just jump on and give you an update on some injuries. <laughs> um, so from the top to the bottom, if you remember, I fell over, banged my head. Day three or four, something like that, I got a black eye. My head was quite painful for quite a while after that, but it's all better now. Yeah, I think it's all better now. <laughs> so that's okay. Um, I've got some injuries on my thumbs. Blisters, basically. I probably told you about this funny tan line that I've got here. I'm holding the um, poles. And uh, when you hold the poles, you kind of have a strap. And if you hold on to them too tight, then you get a kind of blister. So the inside of both my thumbs has blisters. So I didn't want you to think it was all just dead easy. <laughs> um, my calf that I pulled the other day um, is okay. I'm just scared of it going again and the other one. I've only got three days to go now, so hopefully we'll be okay. We've got some more climbing to do tomorrow, but not a huge amount. The thing with the climbing is, the hill doesn't look that big, 400 metres. But you go up and down, up and down, up and down. So you can end up doing six, 700 metres in a day. It's quite a lot of climbing, plus the downhills. Um, when I go downhill, my shins hurt. And I am probably going to lose a toe. Not a toe, a toenail. Not a toe. A toenail um, from going downhill and the front of my toes hitting my shoes, even though I've got shoes that are bigger than they should be. Um, that's still happening and then blisters so from day three or four you'll remember a lady stopped me maybe day five and told me about the tape you can put on fix ml tape so i haven't had touch wood any splinters uh, sorry, any blisters around the back of my feet which is where i normally get them um i have got kind of bunion so i've got the my toes point in, me and Victoria back and both have this problem, but she's had hers operated on uh, where your toes start to move in and you kind of, that knuckle next to your big toes pushes out. It wrecks most of my shoes. It is the reason I can't wear heels or narrow shoes anymore. Absolutely cripples me. Um, well, on one side of my shoes, that's broken through. And so because there's a hole there now, that's rubbing. So I'm really praying. I'm probably going to put fix and I'll tape on it tomorrow to make sure that that hole rubbing against my sock and foot doesn't create a blister there and then on the bottom of my big toe since day two I've got a blister that's caused by the by my toe not being flat in my shoe because of the wonky knuckle <laughs> um, and that is something that flares up during the day so it'll be hard in the morning and then after about five miles or something it starts to get tender I don't know if it fl fills with fluid because I can't see it's under my foot um, but then it hurts for the rest of the day then it tends to go down again so now I'm walking on it it's not too bad but I know tomorrow it'll be back up um, and I've had that the whole time so after five six hour, hour, uh, miles rather a couple of hours it starts to hurt and the problem is I kind of place my foot differently to try and stop it hitting that sore bit but of course that's what causes all the other problems so yeah I just thought I'd not even told you about those kinds of things I just told you the nice things <laughs> and not uh, the injuries that you can get you know I think we've been very very lucky very very lucky I've seen people absolutely hobbling in huge amounts of pain because of blisters and I'll tell you if I have any tips about avoiding blisters we've done anything that's successful we use well i found that the only socks worth using are smart wool socks um i brought five or different five or six different pairs with me and i've just narrowed it down to the two pairs of smart wool socks one of which i bought here for about 20 euros it cost the fortune but definitely worth it i think um and definitely not cotton socks none of those silly kind of trainer socks things the smart wool are tight enough to keep all of the bits of small stones and gravel out of your feet I found I've shown you before how I've um, laced my trainers up in a way that locks my ankle in to the back of the trainer and I think that's definitely helped to stop the um, blisters on the back because my foot isn't moving up and down in the shoe 
and Vaseline. We put in the morning, we put Vaseline on everywhere that we think might be vulnerable. So I put it on the bottom of that toe blister. I put it on both sides, you know, bunions. I put it on the side of my big toes where there's some hard bits there. And I put it round the uh, bottom of my heel where it's rough there. So anywhere that's rough, basically, I put Vaseline on. Um, and that's all we've done for shoe care. We see a lot of pilgrims taking their shoes off in between stops and letting their uh, feet air. I think that's more to do with socks than anything else. Uh, I don't like to do that. It takes me back to skiing days. Never take shoes off until you're too ready because if they are swollen, you'll struggle to get them comfortable again. So I never take them off. But I have seen many, many pilgrims take their shoes off in between when they're resting. Uh, but me and my dad never have. Um, I saw a, a post on someone else's, uh, a question on someone else's post today that I wondered if you wanted to know the answer to, which was how many pairs of shoes do you bring? Um, I brought shoes that had only done maybe 20 miles in them, maybe not even that when I started, so pretty much brand new shoes. They will be going in the bin when we finish walking on Tuesday, they have had it. <laughs> I told you already about them getting repaired in Leon, which was about halfway through. Um, and they've lasted, but the tread's all worn away, so they're quite smooth. If we were wet, rocky days, we'd re I would really struggle in them. Um, so they're more like a trainer now, as opposed to a trail shoe, which is what they started off. And then, as I said, they've got this hole in them um, from the, um, on my bunion um so yeah they've absolutely had it if i looking back i might have been better buying that second pair of shoes anyway in leon because i'm gonna need walking shoes in the future at some point and so it wouldn't have been a waste and because we have a bag that we have couriered between places i wouldn't have had to carry them every day um so yeah possibly i've heard, heard from some other pilgrims like they bring a couple of if they definitely if they're having their bag transported they bring a couple of pairs of part worn shoes that they know were broken in properly it was definitely a fear for me that i'd only done 20 miles in the new shoes when i came i don't think that's ideal to have not having broken your shoes in properly um so yeah i think if i had my time again i might have brought two pairs of shoes or i might have bought a new pair on the way i just even if I did bring them though, unless I absolutely needed them, I probably wouldn't have changed to a different shoe. Just this last kind of two weeks, I think it would have been better if I'd have had more grip. <clears throat> I mean, I haven't fallen or anything, slipped a couple of times, I haven't done any injuries. But yeah, I'm just not as secure in the shoes as I, I would have been. So yeah, there's an injury and a shoe update <laughs> for you um, as we're coming to the end. Um, buen Camino.